Hey everyone, welcome. Uh, end of July, holy, wow. Uh, that's what time it is here anyways, depending on when you're practicing with us. Uh, we're happy to have you join us and thanks for folks that have been able to show up here um, in the Zoom room. Lovely to see you. Um, my name's Jill, and I'm one of the teachers with True North Insight, and uh, my pronouns are they and them, and I'm uh, stewarding on Six Nation territory, colonially known as Fergus, Ontario, and uh, happy to be sharing some practice with you tonight. The topic or the title, they don't always have a title, but uh, tonight is, is uh, generative versus or, or destructive. Destructive or generative is the, uh, what we're talking about. And this is inspired by a TED Talk um, given by Krista Tippett. And the links are down below for Krista's On Being podcast and also for the TED Talk that she offered. And Krista Tippett is a journalist and an author and um, had a radio show and a well-known well podcast for over 20 years. It changed names a few times, but um, yeah, she does great interviews. And uh, in this TED Talk that's linked below and here in the Zoom room, it's entitled Three, pra Three Practices for Wisdom and Wholeness. Great title. Three Practices for Wisdom and Wholeness. And um, she she calls well is based on her over 20 years of interviewing wise 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 folk and uh what she's kind of gleaned around what she calls the arts of living or um perhaps our calling and it it's uh particularly the time that she's offering this talk was post pandemic. So kind of fresh out of <laughs> pandemic, which is not that long ago. So these three arts of living that she offers, I'll just um, name them just so you have a context of, and hopefully some inspiration to listen to her whole talk. Uh, the first one is to see the generative, generative story of our time. The second one is to live the questions, live into, live with the questions. And then the third one is what she refers to as our calling or wholeness, calling into wholeness and what that could mean. And so tonight I'm, I'm not going to just paraphrase her talk because she does that bestest. Uh, but I wanted particularly to talk about just this first offering that she has given in this talk of um, this practice for wisdom and wholeness. And, and uh, in particular, <laughs> because of deep and vast despair, which I think we are all feeling to some degree or to a massive degree. Uh, the perhaps feelings of helplessness or isolation or um, hmm, what's the word like feeling impotent to be of service in the world that is in a state of catastrophe. We're just so glad you came. 
<laughs> but hey, uh, it's not it's not new. But we're just talking about what's true for all of us. It it can't it can't be otherwise. It, it can't be. Um, so the overwhelm and the ca catastrophe of human violence. particularly capitalist colonial violence and the destruction of the earth as well as all the beings, <laughs> including the humans. That, um, and we can also be feeling these things of despair or um, overwhelm, hopelessness, personally, like globally, communally perhaps in our workplaces we may feel that sense of powerlessness and uh but also personally lots of folks feeling very alone or isolated or um despairing and uh so i think we're all very familiar with this destructive, even catastrophic, uh, bleak outlook and mm, experience of, of our world. And so it can be, uh, it can disable, it can Mm, there's another word, but I'll just say disable um, our ability to engage <laughs> and be of service and to get up and continue and do it again and again and again. Um, when we have this negativity bias to um, really pay attention to these destructive qualities. And so it's really important to talk about the truth of the generative aspects of life. Because of the negativity bias, we tend to not give enough attention to what is generative, creative, interconnecting, um, caring, life-giving, worthy of aspiring to. Uh, and so we really need to keep returning to it and turning towards it and cultivating it and talking about it. Otherwise, uh, we could become hopeless. And if we feel hopeless, we're not going to continue to act and respond in skillful, onward leading ways. <clears throat> And, and it's important to pay attention to the whole story, the whole story, not just one aspect of the story. And to really pay attention that the vast majority of people are being, are um, working from intentions and as best as they're able, being forces for healing, for kindness, for harmlessness. I know I can lose sight of that, especially if I'm doom scrolling for too long. And uh, so to start to pay attention to like, who's around you, like, <laughs> there's a sense of where you are in community and just to kind of open the sense doors to the awareness of like neighbors that are being neighborly <laughs> uh, drivers that are following rules of the road uh, people that are honoring shopkeepers and not um, giving them a hard time or a ride you know to to notice and look for 
the vast majority of people that are just neutral to us, that we're not often paying attention to, that are in this generative rather than destructive heart and mindset. And in the Dharma, um, these qualities, generative or destructive, would be called in Pali, could be called, we'll say, in Pali, the language the Dharma was uh, first written down in, as far as we know. Um, this would be called Kusala and Akusala, K-U-S-A-L-A, -A, if you're interested in Pali. And then you put an A in front of it to make it a the opposite or a negative. And so Kusala is usually translated as skillful. And it's an interesting word. And the, 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 the suttas, the dharma, the Buddha used these words like a lot through a vast majority of the suttas. It refers to skillful and unskillful or kusala and akusala. Um, and it's interesting because the Buddha could have used the words that meant good or bad but chose not to. So what, why skillful? It's an interesting word. Of course, it's in translation. And so things are lost in translation, as we know. Um, but it's not a good and bad, like uh, commandments or like uh, some judgment from some external source. Um, but rather to see, uh, like I was looking up the definition in English of what skill means to, or to be skillful, and it's to, it's to develop an aptitude or an ability um, to use knowledge to act effectively. That's so lovely because it's got the words develop in it. You know, we develop a skill and in order and using wisdom or knowledge in order to act effectively, to be of service in the world, whether it's to your immediate circle or wider or wider circles. Um, and kusala or skillfulness mm, cultivates freedom from remorse, freedom from regret and remorse. Our intentions, even though our best intentions can still cause harm, and then we don't say, well, I didn't mean that, you know, it wasn't my intention. We acknowledge, I am so sorry that that caused harm, even if that wasn't our intention. And we listen and we receive that and undertake the intention to repair or um, not cause harm in the future. So it's a, it, even though we may have best intentions, harm can still happen. But uh, so when we've done our best to think, speak, and act skillfully, this uh, leads to freedom from regret and remorse, liberates the heart and mind, because we all know when we've done something, said something harmful to ourselves or to others, we feel it. We feel that contraction. We feel some shame or regret or, you know, some stickiness or some unresolved it lingers, it has an effect, it has a comma, karma. And um, freedom from remorse then leads to joy, piti. In, in the Dharma, joy or piti is not like a Joy, we may think of, you know, in a Hallmark movie or something. It, joy 
is uh, subtle and sweet, uh, pleasant. Mm, it it leads into quality of calm. Uh, it's not a uh, exuberant joy. It's uh, it's like um, rapture. It's related to rapture. You know, when you see like an awe-inspiring vista or sunset or you hear heart-touching music, that sense of rapture with it is that is that quality. So these things about being skillful <laughs> are very important for calming the heart-mind and for um, its onward leading capacity into eventually into equanimity. Mm. There's something else I wanted to say. Let me just see. Oh yeah. Uh I remembered. See, gotta celebrate. How many times do you say, oh I forgot, I forgot. Oh, I remembered. How lovely. Uh, anyways, skillful. Another way that I find helpful to think about what what's skillful, what's skillful, what is what's what would that mean, or how would I discern what's skillful or what's destructive, um, is onward leading. I really like that phrase. It's onward leading, and we can feel that in the body, in our energy in our nervous system, what speech and actions, even thoughts are onward leading. They mm, open us and interconnect us. And um, yeah, there's no better way to say it. Onward leading is uh, one way to think of what is skillful. And in the Dharma, as um, in the teachings of the Buddha, kusala or skillfulness is very much cultivated daily and uh, supported by what's called the precepts, the, the five precepts for lay persons. And sometimes when we're on retreat, it may be eight precepts. For monastic people, it's hundreds, literally hundreds. More for female monastics than males. Lots well, another talk. But anyways, um, lots of digressing tonight. Uh, so the precepts. Precepts are our values, what are your ethics? This is like the, it's the foundation of practice. It's not meditation. Meditation cultivates and supports calm and insight. Uh, but if we're still acting shitty, you can meditate all you want. <laughs> It's not going to cultivate wisdom and kindness and onward leading heart mind. It the foundation is what what's your what's your bottom line? How do you want to be in the world? Okay, so the five precepts that um, lay folks undertake in this practice, um, I will paraphrase as. Um, we undertake the trainings again. Is it's not like I shall not. It's I I incline the heart mind to um, this direction. I undertake the training to refrain from causing harm, from harming living beings, all living beings. The second is I undertake the training to refrain from taking what isn't freely given. To, um, part of my mind is saying, um, 
to take what isn't mine, but you know, mine is a misnomer. So to reflect on how much resources am I taking? Uh, how much energy, how much, uh, whatever we, we can, all the ways we can reflect on that. I undertake the training to, it's even as simple as like, yeah, the resources we use in our home, you know, like leaving the tap running while you're brushing your teeth. It's like as mundane as these things. Oh, am I taking more water than is really, really given or really needed? Lots of ways to look at it. The third is I undertake the training to refrain from causing harm with my sensuality or sexuality. Um, this requires a lot of personal reflection and it's not, uh, it's not a simple line in the sand. Is like, is there consent? Is there any harm uh, to myself or others? Uh, the fourth is I undertake the training to refrain from lying. And sometimes it's also extended to include, you know, gossiping or idle chatter or um, harmful speech of any kind. Um, yeah, so false speech, harmful speech. These all require a lot of discernment. There's times when you might need to not tell the truth in order to save someone's life. Like <laughs> abusive person, neighbor comes to the door, is so-and-so there? I'm looking for them. <laughs> you might uh, evade that question, you know, if you needed to protect somebody. Okay, and the last one is I undertake the training to refrain from heedlessness, from unmindfulness, um, from intoxicants. So if we're using intoxicants to the point that we are no longer heedful, mindful, careful, um, then that's something we want to undertake the training to refrain from. Okay, so those five precepts might resonate for you, might not, but encouragement to explore what are your precepts, what are your values, what are your commitments that are onward leading, that are generative, not destructive. In It can be really... Hmm, really what uh, empowering and important to, to really reflect on them. Don't just be like, yeah, I want to be good. Well, I'm, I'm looking to not be harmful. Spend some time maybe writing or uh, really reflecting and articulating them, writing them out perhaps so that it can really become the bedrock of how you are in the world and with yourself. So when we start the meditation tonight, I'll start by chanting these um, precepts in Pali. And you might not have any knowledge of Pali, but, and that's fine. So that's why I gave a little short form of what they mean but there's something about hearing this dharma echoing through thousands of years in the this ancient language um that may touch some deep ancestral chord for us Um, one of the, another way to, uh, 
cultivate and practice and and uh, expand and stabilize what is generative in our lives is a gratitude practice. Lots of us have done this at times, maybe at times, and then it falls off. And so is it a time to start that again? Um, maybe. And it's, uh, it's a way to turn towards, um, as Krista Tippett says, to take in the good, to really be intentional about taking in the good and acknowledging and looking for the more we uh, speak to what has what what gratitude maybe at the end of the day you might do this before you fall asleep doesn't matter when you do it anytime when you do it as a regular practice it helps you to look for it <laughs> to see it in the day as the day is unfolding So um, in the meditation, we'll start after settling uh, with some time of reflecting and feeling into or just sensing some specifics might come to mind, or it could just be a general felt experience of like what has gone well today. Was there water coming out of the taps? Did you wake up Maybe another day to be alive? Um, you know, these simple things that we could take for granted. Were, was anyone neighborly? Were there birds? Were there animal companions? Like, yeah, etc. cetera. Um, did the plants get watered by all this rain? Uh, so to we'll take some time to reflect, like a little gratitude practice. And, and um to take in the good, start with the precepts, and then we'll do that, and then we'll move into a metta bhavana practice. So metta bhavana is a cultivation. Again, that a skill is a developed attitude. So to cultivate, to grow the seed of kindness, of well-wishing, of onward leading kusala intentions for ourselves, each other, and all beings. That's it, yes. Okay, so uh, adjust your posture for a meditation. See if you need any other support. Some people like to turn away from the computer or dim their lights. Mm -hmm. All right, <clears throat> so finding a posture, standing, reclining, or sitting that feels, um, adding something in here. <clears throat> that feels supportive and upright. So even if you're practicing laying down or reclining, um, these are practices of awakening, awakening the heart mind. And so if, uh, if there's any sleepiness and you're wanting to stay um, alert for the practice, uh, you might lift up your forearm if you're laying down or um, bend your knees so that if you're falling asleep, that, that movement will kind of wake you up. Uh, and take your time to really settle into your posture. See if you need any other movement or stretch or sighing breaths. Sometimes it's helpful to look around our space and to let the nervous system know where you are.
Let awareness settle back and down. Feel the back body down through the weightedness of the body connecting with earth. Muscles soften. Bones drop down. Rest back into the support of the spine and down into the support of the earth. And then open heart, mind, awareness to some reflection on your values or precepts or what, what really guides your speech and thought and actions with yourself and each other and all beings. And then I will chant these five precepts that were described earlier. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambhutasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Panati Pata Veramani Sika Patang Samadhi Ami Adina Dana Veramani Sika Padang Samadhi Ami Kame Sumi Chacharya Veramani Sika Padang Samadhi Ami Musawada Veramani Sika Padang Samadhi Ami Surya Mirya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sika Padang Samadhi Ami Sadhu 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 Feeling these echoes and vibrations from around the globe in many other traditions and languages and in this one through thousands of years infinite number of beings chanting and praying and singing and being in silence and honoring their values that are generative and onward leading. Feel this as a vast interconnected web of which you are one of the jewels. Stretching through time, infinite numbers of people that are taking care of each other and this world. And allow yourself to rest back and down into that support. Feel your heart mind in resonance, in vibration. 
with this vast web of beings. And see if you could feel this as a felt experience in your body. If the nervous system can allow some degree of calm the muscles, some degree of softening, and the heart, some degree of connecting. And see how these heart intentions could lead us towards freedom from regret and remorse and could also lead towards joy. And then if you choose taking some time now to open to, reflect on, or just feel into a felt sense of what has gone well, perhaps just today or recently, some gratitude reflections perhaps, some time of taking in the good, Expanding your awareness to feel and know and recognize that all around you, most people are getting along and taking care. Most people are being forces for healing, kindness, harmlessness. Let's reflect or practice or feel into that interconnectedness for a few minutes together in silence. What has gone well? What kindness did you show yourself or others or was shown to you?
And from this place of feeling the support of the precepts in this vast interconnected web, I'm feeling the support and interconnectedness of the majority of people. with these generative intentions. Now we'll continue to deepen and cultivate, to grow this skillfulness, this skill of kindness with metta bhavana practice. You might let awareness kind of gather and Rest in the sensations in the area of the heart center or center of the chest. This is called chitta, heart mind. Just feeling whatever sensations can be felt here. In heart, mind, center of chest. Maybe sensations of movement or of pulse or the movements from breath or touch of clothing or breeze, whatever sensations are felt in the area of the center of the chest. And as if there's a seed there that we want to help grow, and with the heart of awareness, we touch this seed with these phrases, less emphasis on the words and more on the felt experience or the heart intention, inclining the heart. Even if the mind comes in with uh, stories or doubts, commentary, we just let that float through. And we begin again, just continue repeating these phrases silently to yourself. Connecting with your own self and feeling that seed, that wish to be happy. May I be happy. Saying that to yourself, may I be happy. May I be safe and protected from unskillfulness, from destructive forces internally or externally. May I be safe. May I be well in body and mind as much as possible to whatever degree of wellness is available to me. May I be well. May I be peaceful. May I be peaceful. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be peaceful. Let's continue with that for a few moments together. You can use your own words or these. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be peaceful. Continuing. And then 
Perhaps taking a releasing breath, softening if any tension has arisen. Some people find it helpful to touch a heart to the a hand to the heart or belly. Bowing to yourself and to your deepest heart's aspirations. And now drawing into awareness, opening to a dear one, a, a being that is very easy and natural for the heart to incline with well wishes. It can be an animal companion, it can be someone that you see regularly or someone from your past, but where there's just a very immediate heart connection. It could be a nature being. And just let this being stand in for all those that are that you feel friendly towards, that you feel a heart connection with. And with them, this being in mind, still feeling into the area of the heart center, may you be happy, free from dukkha, this means. May you be happy, free from suffering. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. May you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. Continue with these words or your own, or just resting in the felt experience of these skillful aspirations and cultivation with the friendly or dear one. And now take a releasing breath or soften any tension, rest back and down. And now we open awareness into maybe like a drops of water in a still pond and see the ripples and like a gentle rain infinite ripples overlapping and interconnecting like a web and feel this felt experience of awareness expanding in front of you side to side behind above and below Let awareness open beyond the sphere of what we think of as the self to this boundless network of people that are mostly neutral to us, unnoticed. This, the majority of people that are inclining their hearts and actions towards healing, kindness, harmlessness.
And we incline our own heart mind in connection with all these beings across time, across boundaries, borders. There's people in unknowable places across the span of this earth that are doing this practice right at this moment for us. And we're rippling this out in the same way. May you, all beings, all of these beings, this whole story, may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. All directions, may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be peaceful. Continue. And as we hear these three bells, feeling them like vibrations radiating in all directions with these heart aspirations, these generative qualities. Taking a deeper breath and reconnecting with this heart, body, mind, and the ground. If you like closing your practice with a bow, you might do that. Mm. Thank you for being exactly who you are and your wise intention to be practicing and cultivating kindness and care and wisdom in the world and for being a generative force in a field of what can feel like overwhelming uh, destructive energies. So keep attuning to uh, the generative story um, for the sake of all of us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for being here.